Yep, kicks off at around about 5.30 tonight. So we're really fortunate to get you just before the game. Obviously, Nerida Stewart, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me on, Martin, to chat about the men. Yeah, look, we've got the Constellation Cup tonight. That's the main game, of course. But the uh, the, the curtain raiser is New Zealand men against Australia men. Now, you know, we only see limited glimpses of our men's national netball side. Um, we see them play in the Silver Ferns. And, you know, they're, they're damn good. They're actually very, very competitive. And it's always a surprise to most of us that the, the men beat the women. Would your side beat the Diamonds? Look, we've had some good clashes with them in the training space. And it's been a, a really tight contest. And... The boys have put out some really great netball. I mean, any any opportunity for the men to play alongside their national team is a fantastic opportunity for them to, you know, strut their stuff and see what they need to work on to deliver their best game. So, yeah, we've had some good runs. I won't disclose the uh, the end result, but let's just say it was a tight clash. See, because when, when the Silver Ferns lose to the men, I mean, I think a lot of us are really surprised. Netball just seems a game that's more designed for female athletes. You know, just the pace, the quickness, the... I suppose the dynamism of it, the the ability to use space to see things. I mean, most men we walk around blind, don't we? But it is one of those sports that you just kind of expect that that women would be better at it. Is that is that is that is that a fair thing to say? Look, I don't think so. I think the men just bring something that's a little bit different to the to the game. I think that women play a very considered, structured style of netball, and they have done for a really really long time. But the the men have brought in some real athleticism some speed and that real nice aerial game and I think that just adds a, a new dynamic to the game and I think that they're just as clever and they can play it just as well I think that's the beauty of netball it's designed for you know such a diverse range of of athlete and I think that the men encapsulate that when they play yeah I suppose what I'm trying to get in a long-winded kind of waffly way is it just the sheer physical strength the athleticism the naturalness of the, the male body as opposed to the female body is that going to just create a superiority in any way is it no I think it's like any any style of sport I think that the we've got a mix of players that have been very experienced and have played around it just as long as the girls have played around it so they've learnt that those fundamental learnings when you inject yourself into any team sport and I think that they just add that the benefit of being athletic. And I mean, you've seen some of our national women play. I mean, they're pure athletes. Yeah, totally. And I think they would match it, match it with the men. So I, I can't see that it's just the athleticism that, that makes them sort of more, I wouldn't say superior, but makes them just as qualified to deliver a game in a high, high performance space as the Ferns or the Diamonds. So I, I think they have a great knowledge, a great court sense. And we'll see that tonight when they're out on court. So the 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 the, this, the relative standard of um, you know if you put one of the the New Zealand men's team or the Australian men's uh, team into um, say just you know the obviously the, the the top level provincial competition, what what chance would they have of winning that? Do you think? Look, I think they take it take it to the the girls. If they were, are you suggesting that it's in with a mixed? Like just just one men's team in with in with the women, or or sort of staggered, or yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's just a I mean, combination it's, of both. Yeah, why not? Yeah, um, I think that it would be a very fair contest across the board. I know uh, I I would hope that in the future, even within the Australian competition, that we see some male teams, you know, affiliated with the SSN uh, competition as well, and that could run parallel to that. But I I definitely think that it would be it's, they're very different games in that. You know, the fundamental game is there, the core game is there, but they just bring a new dynamic to it. Okay. So I think it would be, you know, like if for us as a, as a male team, we look at trying to develop a whole range of skills that we can add to our game. So like the girls playing up against the men would look to add a whole new range to their game. So I think it's actually going to make the game of netball evolve and it'll start to shift across the female and male space. How big is it in Australia? How many men play? Well, I think we've got about, the uh, last number I saw was about 90,000. Wow. Um, yeah, which is huge. And that's, a, of course, that's across a whole range of different competitions. So you've got your juniors, you've got your indoor, you've got your mixed, you've got men leagues competition. So there's quite a few out there and it's growing rapidly. I think last year um, it was one of the, the fastest growing male sports. So it, it, it is something that's starting to get traction. Funding. Do you get any funding, any kind of government assistance or anything for you and your team? Unfortunately, we don't. So at the moment, it's a very self-funded program. Uh, all of our staff are volunteers and the players fund their tours and anything extra and additional that they need to add to that in their training environment 
you get a few little tiny minor sponsorships, which are, you know, maybe enough to cover some accommodation at a camp, but that's pretty much it. So, you know, hopefully this display that we've and this opportunity that we've got to showcase the game will will show people out there that they want to get involved and they want to partner up with us and it'll sort of alleviate some of that financial pressure that the athletes and the coaching staff are facing. Doing it for love. This is what that's called, isn't it? Uh, it is, actually. I, I, I think for me personally, it's a space where I find a lot of joy with these athletes because they play, they they still have that sense of love and joy in the game and, and you know, not discarding the fact that the females have lost, lost that at all. I think that they still love what they're doing, but ultimately to turn up to your training and to really implement everything at a, in a high performance space you have to love it and you have to get joy from it and I, I think as much as we all love that it would be great to get some financial investment mm. to assist us with that of course yeah um but yeah you do you do love it and and i think any sports like that you've got to love what you do near to Stewart is the australian men's netball coach and that's the warm-up tonight for the constellation cup you're on the platform what's your background then so obviously you played what kind of level Oh, I played for the, it was back when it was the Sydney Swifts, so I played for the Swifts back in my heyday um, and for my state as well. So that's my sort of playing experience. And why did you get into the men's side of it then, coaching the men? I was coaching the women for a, quite a while and I sort of was looking for a bit of a change. I think I sort of got a little bit sort of flat in, in the coaching space and I was looking at taking a break and then uh, one of our committee members in New South Wales, Heath Brown, had come out to a, a, one of the girls' training sessions and had a look at the way I coached and came up and said, do you want to get involved? And I thought this would be a great challenge. It might freshen things up for me. And it was an absolute game changer for me, really. It was it was something that I realised why I coach and, and the joy that I got from being in a space where people were just so open to learning and had a strong desire to be their best again. And um, it really shifted things to the way that you deliver stuff. So it energised me a lot. And, and I just love being in a space where people are so passionate about what they do. What a, great, what, a, what a great response. What a great answer that is. So we've got the Women's Rugby World Cup on here at the moment. I know that you know that. And there's a lot of discussion in this country about equality and about, you know, can these, you know, two to, to separate sports, men's and women's, exist on a, on a level playing field. And obviously economically that the women's game needs, you know, a huge leg up and whether they can financially survive on their own. I mean, that's a lot of questions around that. But at, but at the same time, if you flip it around, it's not an apples and apples argument. I know that. But if you flip it around... The men are never going to ask for that, are they? Playing netball. Why is that? Why, you know, why, why, why won't we ever have that discussion? Don't you think as to whether men's netball could get on an even footing with the female side of the game? It just doesn't seem it's, it's, oh. it's, it's you know, it's ever going to be brought up. I hope it does. I really hope that that, that discussion does happen. I think I, you know, for me, the conversation of sport. I think the gender part of that conversation has started to be removed. I think across the globe, really. Um, and I think the conversation we need to start to drive with sport is about opportunity and it's opportunity at a grassroots level for, for boys and girls and it's seeing that there's a pathway in whatever sport that they choose and we see that across a multiple range of sports. You've got AFL, you've got rugby league, you've got rugby union. I mean, my, my, all my children, I've got a mix. There's five boys and girls, they all play rugby. So I love the fact that there's opportunity for, for males and females to play whatever sport it is that they love and whatever sport it is that they, they drive to be the best in. And I'm hoping that, that you know, this opportunity as the, being the Curtain Razor event for the, the Ferns and the Diamonds provides us that platform to have those conversations and be able to have that, that chat with the people in the places that can make change. And that's what we're here to demonstrate to everyone, that we're willing to get on board if they are. Again, what a fantastic answer. And so nice to be able to sit here and actually ask that question and get an answer like that. <laughs> Look, I mean, you know, we've got, you know, we've got a different political system here. We've got a, a different societal politics. And a lot of it is just screaming and yelling at men and saying, you should be watching women's sport. You should be. And if you're not, you're a misogynist. I don't know about you, um, Nerida, but I, you know, I'm in my 50s. I, you know, I hate getting told off and I hate getting told what to do. And I'm at one of those stupid men that if you tell me to do something, I'll just do the opposite because I'm a moron. And so, you know, but, 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 this is, but this is the deal. This is the reality, isn't it? If it's good to watch, we will watch it. Everyone will watch it. If it's good to watch, you've got to put it. Look, it's like having a, a rock band and think that, you know, great, we put out a single, but what say no one's buying it? Well, then no one likes it. You know what I mean? Look, I, I think any sport, I'm a sport lover myself, and I, any sport, particularly between the Australian and New Zealand teams, like, you know, for me growing up as a kid, 
the, the netball test where they've played against each other, but also the rugby test where they've played against each other. You know, that's sport. That's why we watch. It's not because there's women or men out there. It's because of that competition and that, you know, that energy that you feel when you're watching something like that. So if something's high performance and it's an elite product to watch, you know, this is why we watch the Olympics. We don't all follow those sports, but or com games, we don't follow those sports, but we love it because it's great entertainment and sports become that it's become entertainment so i think everyone needs to broaden their horizons and, and run their eyes across the you know the balance of the men's and women's aspects of any sport and i think tonight the you know in this series for us you'll realize that these men are athletes and they're here to actually deliver the best for the people out there watching fantastic talking to you all the very best five kids my god <laughs> five. <laughs> I've got two. I've got two. We have five. God, good on you. I mean, wow, what a great, what a great big family to have, you know. And yes, it's lovely. I bet. Yeah, and look, and thank you so much for your time. Um, all the very best while you're here in New Zealand, and hopefully we can catch up with you again. Thank you so much, Martin, for having us on.